evening. I'm Forrest. I'm a rising senior at Monta Vista High School, and uh, my main project, as Sam said, was an IoT smart light, and my starter project was an Arduino controlled nightlight. So um, today, I'm just gonna bring you, um, take you with me on my journey, and tell you guys about my process in building uh, my main project. And let's first start off with um, my starter project. So my starter project, as I said, was an Arduino controlled nightlight. Basically, uh, a quick rundown of it, uh, you have a photoresistor that takes in an input, and then if it passes a threshold that's set into the Arduino, um, the light will turn on, and then there's a potentiometer, which is a dial that will turn, can change the color of the LED. So very similar to my starter project, my main project here also uses sensors to turn on my light. So uh, basically, I have a passive infrared um, resistor, I mean, PIR, a passive infrared sensor that detects movement, a uh, movement and that uh, turns on the light. So I chose this project because I wanted to create a software and, as well as hardware um, build that I could easily um, modify as well as use when I'm at home when I'm done with it. So I'm going to do a quick demo. So um, it's currently on as you see here. The LCD is, uh, is on. So these sliders here. This is my IoT dashboard called Kaya. These sliders basically control the RGB values of the light. So if I drag, the light should turn on. And basically, I can customize um, the light to be any color it wants, or I want to be. <laughs> and the second column, I have different modes. So security mode, um, basically, once you turn on, um, the PIR will detect movement. If there's movement detected, that's basically unwanted. Um, this buzzer will sound. Um, if I put my hand in front of it, the buzzer should turn on. There we go, it's kind of quiet. But yeah, and in order to turn it off, I need to click on the safe mode. And these other buttons basically give you um, input values from the, um, the project itself and the sensors. So basically how it works, as I said, I have three sensors. I have a PIR, um, a passive infrared sensor, which detects movement, a DHT22, which detects humidity and temperature, as well as a photoresistor, which detects light. And all, these, all three of these basically get inputs and send them to Cayenne um, via wireless, wireless connection. And uh, underneath, if I lift up my box, this PCB is uh, powered with my battery pack, and uh, the Node MCU is my micro. So one of the challenges I faced with my project was definitely getting Cayenne set up because Cayenne is basically my entire back end to the project and um, I had a lot of issues with it in the beginning. So after some debugging, I realized that some of my, ID, uh, my Arduino um, IDE libraries were not compatible uh, for some reason. So I had to go onto GitHub and search up some repositories and download them and re-upload them into the IDE to get them working. And uh, Basically, from Bluestamp, I've learned uh, lots of things that I would never have learned in a classroom setting. For example, like dremeling, getting trained on like drilling, and just like working with instructors uh, to debug as well as like um, remap my entire like progress and like how to basically add modifications. And on that note, uh, my first modification right here is my LCD. It was not originally part of it, but uh, I decided to add it because um, it'd be more interactive. So I, right now I can get real time and real weather conditions from um, an NTP time server as well as open weather maps and I'm using their API. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. How did you program your uh, the Kion, like application? Okay. So um, Kion came as like a library. Um, basically, you download it um, through like MQTT, like uh, I think it was a plugin. And Cayenne itself is just a dashboard, um, it's just nothing more. And basically, you connect it, you connect the Node MCU to the Cayenne, and then afterwards, um, it's more of like a framework that you can work with and like add buttons and triggers and all that. Yeah. What's one of like the most common like what what sort of issue did you run into that like maybe it was those like the toughest issue you ran into, not just like not generally what issue, but what was the toughest issue that you weren't sure how you were going to get through when you first encountered it? Um, I think it's still going to have to be like the Kion library. Um, the first issue that I ran into uh, was really kind of 
basic and it was just like a misstep. I think the manual just had it wrong. I think I worked with Sahas on this and it would just had to do with like the casing of um, the library. So I couldn't like include it into my, um, my basically my program. Yeah. So after I got the updates, I could basically work on the client and then other issues showed up that I You've already got a few modifications in there. Are there any modifications that maybe you haven't quite finished yet or anything else you're planning on adding? Yes, um, so with the LCD itself, I want to basically add a button to um, my box and then that's going to tie into the LCD that basically, when I click it, it clears the screen and then it shows like a new screen pops up with more widgets. Like for example, I could add a, like a real time temperature from my DHT22 or maybe like stocks or anything else. Yeah, that's like my one that is most plausible to, that I can complete in like the next three days. Um, but other than that, I think I'd want to make it more like catered to like home security. So maybe connecting it, like I already have like wireless connections, I could probably connect it to like a smart device, um, such as like a smart lock or something. And hopefully I can like do something like that. Yeah. Maybe for your front door. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Could you add more sensors? And if, if, what sensors would you add? Yeah, um, so right now, um, I think for my LCD, I'm using, as I said, I'm using an NTP um, time server, and it's kind of inaccurate, or at least there's like a bit of like um, lag between um, it and my LCD, so it skips a couple seconds like every so often. So I think if I could add anything, it would be a crystal oscillator within um, like my actual project, so that'd be more accurate. It'd be like more like in here instead of going through like servers and grabbing and fetching your data, which would take more time and is like less yeah. uh, The You had a humidity sensor? Yeah. What is the use case for that and how did you test it? Um, okay, so the humidity sensor is like down here right now. So I have a couple of holes like around the box for like some of the sensors so like air can go in. Um, for testing, I basically create a program for it and uh, basically, I tested if like basically I had um, oh if you can like every like two seconds I'd be like hey can you give me the percentage of humidity and then I compare that with like the actual humidity in the room or like on Google and then basically I kind of fine tune that and the purpose is like oh if someone walks into the room like, humidity is hopefully going to rise because like, you're breathing out CO2 and um, like there's like, water like, more water vapors in the room if you get closer to it so if you're like walking by it then there's going to be more humidity and while you're in the room the humidity will rise. If you can detect that like slow pattern, um, basically you'll know that someone's in the room. Which isn't 100 percent accurate right now. 